Hey guys, welcome to the Digit Weekly Roundup where we recap everything that we've done this past week for you and put it in one exciting package in case you missed it. Now, of course, the biggest story this week is Apple launched a lot of products, refreshed a lot of products that they already have with a great refresh for the Apple TV. The iPad Pro, which was rumored, is finally a reality. And of course, the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus. In other news, Samsung has announced the launch of the Galaxy Note 5 in India. Uh, those were essentially the biggest product highlights that we saw this week. Moving on, we have our first impressions of the U Unique. Yes, we have another device from the company U, but it isn't running on Synogen and Hardik has his first impressions of this smartphone. Hi guys, this is Hardik here from Digit and today we have with us, this is the U Unique. This phone was launched yesterday at an event here in Delhi. It was priced at 4999 and it's available in a flash sale model via Snapdeal. So going with the specs first, this phone is running a Qualcomm Snapdragon 410 with 1 GB of RAM and comes with 8 GB of storage. There's a 4.7 inch HD display on the front which is an IPS display. At the back there's an 8 MP camera with LED flash and it uses a matte back which is quite nice to hold. The volume and the power keys are all in the same line and uh, the power button sits in the middle of the two volume buttons here. When you peel off the cover, you find a 2000 milliampere non-removable battery inside and the phone supports the usual dual SIM slots and a micro SD card. Looking at the UI and you would notice that this phone is not running Cyanogen uh, as per se and running an Android stock version which is the first from U because previous U phones used to run on Cyanogen. However, the company has said that you can download the Cyanogen ROM from the website and uh, root this phone and use this. Sticking with the smartphone territory, we also have the first impressions of the Oppo R7 Lite and the Oppo R7 Plus. Here's a look at the first impressions of these two phones. Oppo introduced two new metal-clad smartphones in the Indian market, the R7 Lite and the R7 Plus. The phones are beautifully designed and on first impression seem well equipped to handle more or less all tasks a customer might use the phone for. But that's not all. Let's take a closer look as we give you our first impression of the Oppo R7 Lite and the Oppo R7 Plus. Oppo has claimed that its propriety VOOC charging technology on top of Qualcomm's fast charging can charge the Oppo R7 Plus, which has a 4100 mAh battery from 0 to 50% in just 30 minutes. The Oppo R7 Plus is a big phone, a 6-incher. The display is 1080p Super AMOLED panel, which is quite bright and has very good contrast. Even though the phone holds a large display and would require two hands to hold, it is not as big as the Nexus 6. The thin bezels and the on-screen buttons have helped Oppo to ensure a smaller footprint. Displays on both phones offer a 2.5D curved glass upping the look of the phone. The R7 Lite is a small, one-handed device with a 5-inch display that boasts a 720p resolution. From an initial impression, display felt quite accurate. Adding to this, the thin profile of the phone seemed like a more polished version of the Samsung Galaxy A7. The Oppo R7 Lite is priced at Rs. 17,990 and will be available from 10th September across India. The Oppo R7 Plus is priced at Rs. 29,990 and will be available from 25th of September. This week we also have the Micromax Canvas Tab P680. Now the tablet is priced at 10,000 rupees, well a little under 10,000 rupees and it boasts of the ability to make calls. But should you consider purchasing it? Well, you can watch my review and find out. Today we have with us the Micromax Canvas Tab P680. Priced under rupees 10,000, can this be your foray into the tablet market or are you better off aspiring for something better? Well, we're about to find out. Lying flat, screen up, it's easy to mistake it for one of the infamous Nexus tablets, and that's a good thing. The front of the tablet is clean, no buttons. Surrounding the display is a black border, which makes the display look smaller than it is, a standard we have seen with budget tablets. Turn the table around and you will be slightly impressed. The back of the tablet is plastic with gunmetal-like finish. Sticking with the back, the top and bottom have a rubberized finish which adds to the grip. A nice touch. It also makes the tablet look quite premium. Tear it open and once you recover from the shock that you almost broke it, you will see the two SIM card slots and the micro SD card slot. Moving on to its weight, the Micromax Canvas Tab P680 does feel slightly heavy in one's hands. I love reading books on my tablet and after prolonged reading on the P680, it was tiring. But then again, I could be getting old. Overall, the design of the tablet is pretty good. Slightly heavier than I'd like, but a good looker nonetheless. 
display and UI. The 8-inch IPS display has a 1280 by 800 pixel resolution and gets the job done quite well. It has very good viewing angles and watching a video on the device is a treat. The downside is that you'd better be wearing headphones. The audio output from the speakers at full volume cracks and that isn't a good thing. Coming to the UI, it's a stock Android with light skin something we have seen every Micromax device out there. It runs on Android 5.0.1. Overall, the display is the highlight of the device and the audio is a downer. The UI is standard, what you'd expect. There are preloaded apps that you will most likely end up deleting. Performance. Start using the tablet for a while and the first thing that you will notice is that it lags after some time of use. I started playing Dead Trigger 2 and the game ran smoothly. I shifted to Asphalt 8 and the stutter was very evident, very noticeable. Now when it comes to videos, I saw a bunch of MP4 movies on the tablet and they worked well. Once again, the display stands out and it's a better experience with headphones. So now that you've seen a little bit of the performance of the tablet, let's get into specifications. As mentioned earlier, the Micromax Canvas Tab P680 has an 8-inch IPS display with a 1280 by 800 pixel resolution. It has a 1.3 GHz MediaTek processor coupled with 1 GB of RAM. It has 16 GB built-in storage, expandable up to 32 GB via a microSD card. The rear has a 5 megapixel camera and the front is a 2 megapixel camera. A 4000 mAh battery powers the entire package. Coming to everyday use, it's the 1 GB of RAM that limits the multitasking performance as well as the gaming performance. The typing experience on the device is good in landscape mode. I have big fingers so it's easy for me to type in landscape mode. In portrait mode, not so much. Coming to the performance of the camera, it's average, but then again, do you really use a tablet to click pictures? Coming to the feature I will never use on a tablet, making calls. Surprisingly, the call quality of the tablet was good on both the earpiece and the loudspeaker. It's like the loudspeaker was meant more for making calls than multimedia. So here is the million dollar question, should you buy the Micromax Canvas Tab P680? Well, for a piece 13,000, you can get a behemoth of a performer like the Xiaomi Mi Pad. The Mi Pad runs on the NVIDIA Tegra K1, 2GB of RAM, and 16GB built-in storage. The 7.9-inch display has a 2048 by 1536 pixel resolution. The device, however, can't house a SIM card and thus can't make any calls. So by increasing your budget by Rs. 3000, you can get a much better performing device. However, if you are looking to make calls with a tablet and don't mind compromising on the performance, then you can consider the Canvas Tab P680. Again, sticking with phones, because of course that is the category you are most excited about, we have our full review of the Carbon Titanium Mark 5 Yes, I had the opportunity to review the phone and this is my review of the Titanium Mark 5. If you're looking for a phone under 7K, then there are the likes of the Xiaomi's Redmi 2, Micromax Canvas Express 2, and the U Euphoria. Today, we have with us another contender at the same price point, the Carbon Titanium Mark 5. Does this device triumph amongst the competition, or are you better off looking elsewhere? The back of the smartphone has a textured matte gray finish, making it comfortable to hold. The front, on the other hand, is standard, what you'd expect from a device in this price range. Below the display, we have the standard capacitative buttons for back, home, and menu. The multitasking can be brought up by double tapping the home button. Above the display, you have the earpiece with the ambient light sensor. Overall, the bill of the smartphone is standard, what you'd expect from a sub 7K smartphone. The 5 inch display on the Carbon Titanium Mark 5 is as good as the one we saw on the Micromax Canvas Express, if not better. It is a 720p display with a black border surrounding the display. This makes the display look smaller than it actually is. The first thing that you will notice is that at its lowest brightness setting, the display is still quite bright. Coming to the cons of the display, the touch is inconsistent. There are times when I was playing a game, navigating YouTube and answering a call, and the response of the touch was perfect. Then there were times, and this happened during typing, that the touchscreen didn't respond, or rather, it couldn't keep pace with my typing. This was very evident with the pre-installed SwiftKey keyboard. Coming to the color reproduction, it was good. No complaints here. I watched a few MP4 videos and a lot of YouTube, and the smartphone held up quite well. The viewing angles aren't the best. You can turn the phone around a bit and the display is fine, but beyond a point, the colors will start looking off. Overall, the UI is stock, which I prefer when compared to the skinned UI, especially on budget devices. Under the hood, the device is powered by a MediaTek MT658 to 1.3 GHz quad-core processor coupled with 2 GB of RAM. It has 16 GB built-in storage expandable via a microSD card. The rear has an 8 megapixel camera and the front has a 5 megapixel camera. Both the cameras are accompanied with a flash. A 2200 mAh battery powers the entire package. For everyday use, the phone worked just fine. The call quality was good at both ends, but the earpiece does leak a lot of audio at full volume. 
the speaker is positioned at the back of the device and that isn't that great, especially if you are someone that places the phone on a table while listening to music through the loudspeaker. Coming back to multitasking, you can have quite a few apps open and running in the background and so long as they aren't memory hungry, the phone will run fine. Moving on to gaming, it ran most games without any hiccups, but don't expect to run graphically heavy beasts on this phone. Coming to the cameras, the images are good enough if you want to post them on social networking websites, but when you zoom into them, they lack detail. The low light performance isn't the best, but there are a few images that we clicked in the night that look good. The front facing camera is average. The flash does help, but don't expect to get your next profile picture from the front camera of the smartphone. Bottom line. For a price of rupees 6,000, the smartphone has 2GB of RAM, a good display, and great battery life in its favor. Where it lacks is with the inconsistency of the touchscreen and the inability to run Google Maps smoothly. If you are looking for a smartphone under rupees 6,000, you have the likes of the Moto E along with Micromax Canvas Express 2 to consider. The Express 2 performed better in our benchmarks despite its limiting to 1GB of RAM. If built-in storage is important to you, then the Mach 5 is the one for you, but if you're looking for a phone with better overall performance and some Bupileri level swag, then we suggest you take a look at the Canvas Express 2. Now if you haven't heard the name Vivo, we wouldn't blame you, but the company has been making headlines in India these past few weeks and we had the Vivo X5 Pro to review this week and here is what we thought of the smartphone. The Vivo X5 Pro is well designed and has a good display and performance, but it is equally bad when it comes to camera and pricing. Vivo is yet another Chinese brand trying to make its presence felt in the Indian smartphone market. The company entered the Indian market last year with the Vivo X5 Max and it has launched a number of devices since then. So does the Vivo X5 Pro justify its price tag? Let's find out in this review. The device is well built with metallic frame fitting seamlessly with the rest of the phone's body. In addition, the glass on the back of the phone is Gorilla Glass, making it sturdier and harder to scratch, but you still do have glass which can break. The Vivo X5 Pro is a dual SIM phone and supports micro SD card expansion. However, there is a hybrid SIM slot which means you can either use it as a dual SIM device or with a SIM and an SD card. Display is one of the strongest areas of this device. The Vivo X5 Pro sports a 5.2 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080p. The phone has a sharp display with good viewing angles. The display is bright and the color depth is quite nice. The sunlight visibility is also respectable. Of course, the yellowish tinge of AMOLED displays is something many may not like, but that doesn't make the display bad. The smartphone runs on Vivo's own UI named FunTouch OS, which is based on Android Lollipop 5.0. The software lacks an app drawer, similar to so many custom UIs today. In addition, the FunTouch OS offers an app called iManager, which is an app that lets you access data manager, battery manager, app manager, etc. from one place. The software also lets you set custom gestures for launching apps and performing certain tasks. There are a few things about the OS which I found weird and didn't like though. For example, the phone didn't show music controls on the lock screen for any other music app except for the stock app, which comes pre-installed on the phone. The smartphone is powered by a 1.5 GHz octa-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 615 SoC coupled with 2 GB of RAM. The processor handles most daily tasks really well except for a few instances. It performed quite well even during multitasking. As for gaming, I played Real Racing 3 and WWE 2K and the lag were similar to many other 615 driven smartphones that we've seen before. It does heat up quite easily enough as we've noticed on Snapdragon 615 before this as well. As for sound quality, the Vivo X5 Pro is loud enough. There are two speaker grills at the bottom, but it seems the sound comes from only the one on the left. Music is better through headphones. The Vivo X5 Pro has a non-removable 2450mAh battery. The battery won't last you for one full day, but with moderate use it can take you through a work day, say about 12 hours, so that you can reach home and put it on charge. During our battery test, the phone lasted for 12 and a half hours. As for my daily usage, the time varied anywhere from 11 to 13 hours. Camera is one department where the Vivo X5 Pro really disappointed. On paper, the device has a 13 megapixel rear camera with flash and an 8 megapixel front shooter, but in reality, it's not up to the mark. As for the rear camera, the images taken in daylight are subdued, and in low light, they come out to be even worse and the flash doesn't help either. The Vivo X5 Pro offers you good design, build and display, along with good enough battery, but lets you down in the camera department. Also, the device uses the second SIM slot for micro SD card expansion, meaning you will have to sacrifice one for using the other feature. 
It's priced in the 20K to 30K range, which makes it quite expensive in terms of both what it offers as well as in comparison to other devices like OnePlus 2, OnePlus One, and Asus Zenfone 2 available in the market. So after reading the review and knowing the price, if you want to go for the phone, you can, but it is quite hard to recommend it. Last but not least, before we leave, Prasid had the opportunity to attend the launch of the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 that happened this week. And here are his first impressions of the smartphone. The Galaxy Note 5 has a 5.7-inch QHD display with a 517 ppi pixel density. The display looks nice and quite bright with good viewing angles. While we can't comment on the performance at the moment, the UI seems fluid enough on this demo device. The phone has a 16 megapixel rear camera and 5 megapixel front camera. While the camera is really quick, the quality is something we'll test out later. Considering that this is the same camera as the Galaxy S6 though, we expect good things. Overall, Samsung has gone with the curved class design, but unlike the Edge series, the curve is on the back. And I have to say, the phone resembles a Xiaomi Mi Note Pro. The back is made out of glass and seems somewhat fingerprint intensive, but we'll have to spend some more time with it to be sure. It runs on Android 5.1.1 Lollipop and comes with Samsung's own S Pen, which has been a trademark of the Note series. The new S Pen has some added features, like writing on the screen when the display is turned off, etc. While the S Pen is as good as ever, there's really not much to talk about. The Note 5 will cost Rs 53,900 for the 32GB version and Rs 59,990 for the 64GB version and will be available from September 20th onward. Well, that's it for this week's Digit Roundup. It was a mobile-filled show, but that's what happened this week. If you liked the show, didn't like it, if you'd like to see a particular product reviewed, you can let us know in the comment section below. We'll see you Monday. Have a happy weekend.